Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going over the Kiev 60. That's right, I finally said Kiev instead of Kiev. Even though I know it's Kiev, I just always say Kiev. Cause I don't know, it's just instinct. Change the setup a little bit, as you can see. Felt like mixing it up, throwing your curveball, you know, changing the angles, getting things, you know, crooked and not straight away. Anyways, today we're talking about the Kiev 60 with the RSAT 30mm 3.5 lens, which is basically a fisheye lens. Hey guys, so I just wanted to clarify a few things about this giveaway. So I noticed that there was some spam comments, uh, a few of you informed me on the previous video uh, with a random username with my photo and the name was WhatsApp and then a WhatsApp phone number. Obviously that's not me. Uh, and they said to message them only through WhatsApp uh, and that they were the winner, but they posted on like 30 different comments. So obviously that's not gonna be me. Uh, that's not how I said I was gonna announce the winner. I said I would announce it in this video and then reach out to that specific person. Um, so sorry if that person reached out to you. Do not give your information of any sort out to anybody because I'm not asking you for any permission except for a shipping address. You don't have to send me money or anything like that. So whatever that person asked you for, if anything, obviously that's not gonna be me. First giveaway would have been the username that commented on that. So that's the first thing. So at the end of this video, we will announce the winner and then I'll reach out to that specific person. And obviously if they don't get back to me or something happens, then I'll go down the list. So after the video. Also, if you're looking for any film gear, be sure to check out my website down below. I'm selling a bunch of cameras, lenses, all kinds of stuff like that. And if you're curious about what I'm shooting with, what my digital setup is, or where I get film like that, uh, there are affiliate links in the description below. Again, those are affiliates, so they help me make the content for this channel. So the Kiev 60 is a medium format SLR produced by Arsenal in the former USSR between 1984, I believe, and 1999. Now, I know previously I said this was kind of a copy of the Pentacon 6 which I misspoke on. It's not so much a copy, it is inspired by the Pentacon 6. It has the same bayonet style mount, so you can use a lot of the Pentacon glass on this Kiev 60. So that's kind of the draw to it and what makes this a special kind of budget-friendly option to using that Pentacon glass. So when talking about any camera from the USSR, uh, you would not be doing anyone justice if you did not talk about the well-known and popular quality control issues that we get with anything that comes out of the USSR from that kind of a time frame. Uh, it, quality control was not the biggest concern they had. Needless to say, you have to be very careful in going about any camera from the USSR. Predominantly, this of course applies to the Zenits. We've talked about those before, I'll link that up here. Uh, Zenits, Helios lenses, hit or miss. If you get them, they're great. If you get them bad, they are really bad. Another one is the context copies. Yeah, those are the Keeves too. Yeah, the Keeves one, two, three, and four. I think it was up to the four. Uh, I think it was up to the, yeah, I think it was up to the four in the Kiev's uh, rangefinders that is basically a contacts copy. After that, it changed. It was no longer, you know, made in the contacts factory with the same contacts parts. Uh, it changed and so quality dropped off with that as well. Wow, that's metal. How did I not knew that? I shot with this already. I didn't know this was metal. Dang, that's intense. Moving right along. When it comes to looking for this or any other USSR camera, make sure it is in working condition if you were gonna purchase it, unless you're getting it for dirt cheap. The biggest place to get kind of scammed, I don't wanna say scammed, but um, lose on your investment is to buy something off eBay was unknown condition, uh, because odds are with cameras from the USSR, that unknown condition is gonna be more than often worse than better. So make sure there is a return policy if you go that route. As I mentioned before, I have shot one of these before and I kind of enjoyed it, it was cool. It had the 80 mil lens on it, which is over there. I might have to go get that in a second. Yeah, I'm gonna go get that actually. This is the 90 mil 2.8. So to my knowledge, from my research, this is kind of the kit lens that comes with it. It's equivalent to a 50 mil. Uh, so previously when I shot on this camera, this is what I used. This is a six by six medium format SLR. So just like with a TLR, you get 10, 12 shots, 12 shots. Yeah, 12 shots. Keep getting six by nine, six by seven, six by six. I get them all mixed up in the counts. It's constantly changing shooting all these different cameras. But in shooting that camera, only one photo came out. Here's a little lens. 
uh, it's a nice little lens. Only issue is I only got one photo out of that roll of 12. Reason being is because it had a film advance lever issue, so it wasn't really advancing the film. It was, yeah, it was tricky. You had to like press it down a certain way and twist it, and even then you weren't really sure if it was advancing. So I got one good shot out of it and the rest was just blank. I don't even think it went past like the second shot or something. So the first one was good and then the rest just never even happened. I was with a different body, but this body I actually had a good experience with and it worked out positively. I was 12 for 12. Besides the one shot with that was really out of focus because I was trying to see how close I could get it and then I wasn't angled low enough to get the front of the rocks and focus, which you'll see that when it gets to that image. With this RSAT 30mm 3.5 lens, your focusing range is infinity down to 0.3 meters. And then is f3.5 to f22. There's several different mounts for this. I've one of, and just looking on eBay, there was Nikon mounts, another kind of, I think, a Leica mount as well. So there's a few different mounts for this lens and lens is actually pretty good. Personally, I'm not a fan of fisheye lenses, uh, but the results I got with this were great. It's a nice, sharp lens, good results. No complaints really for being a fisheye lens. That's just not my personal style. I like to try and create depth of field. I like to stick with around a 24. If I'm gonna use a 14 to 18 mil, I want a lower f-stop of about 1.4 just so I can help create some depth of field with that. With this being a 3.5 and then also being just like a 10 mil or something like that, it's just, there's no way to really create depth of field. And so since I'm not really experienced with shooting fisheye photography, I just had a hard time creating anything interesting with this lens. So now this is is a SLR. This is a medium format SLR, six by six. So it's kind of a more affordable option to a Pentax 6.7, although a Pentax 6.7 is of course a six by seven. I say that only because here in the States where I'm at, the Pentax 6.7 is much more popular and well-known than the Pentacon 6. Also, I believe the 6.7 is more easy to come by or maybe just a more popular camera than the Pentacon. I believe there's some issues with the Pentacons that make it not as sought after as a 6.7 as well. The reason this is sought after is because of course you can use a Pentacon glass on this system and this kind of has some different features. Interesting things about it is it has a removable prism which is again similar to the Pentax 6.7 and I can't get it all. Where is, where is that one? Massive removable prism. Love having that on my 35 mil SLRs. And then of course I shot with a Pentax 6.7 once. Didn't really use that feature just because when you take this off, I mean, where are you going to put it? Rather large chunk to drop in your pocket. Uh, kind of an annoyance to this is that I've seen other people mention it and I have had the same issue is this shakes. I don't like the shape. There's no foam or anything to keep this smooth and close to the body. So you do get a little bit of shake and I've seen where other people have had the same issues. So I think it's pretty much common. Uh, and then coming from cameras like the Nikon F2, F3, the Canon F1s, the Pentax 6.7, I'm just not used to having that shake and it kind of bothers me. Other features, the camera goes from bulb mode all the way to one over a thousandths. Uh, it does have a meter in it, the little battery door there. Uh, you select your ASA up here. Another quirk is the film advance. Uh, it's it's not really centered. So when you advance it, it does this weird thing where it kind of spins around. Isn't that weird? It just goes all the way, it's a weird, it doesn't go in a straight line. And then the shutter button is right there on the front of the camera. Quit focusing on me, focus on the camera. There we go, so shutter button's right there. It does sound kind of nice though, I will say that. I didn't put the locks on this desk. It's kind of starting to bother me. So I first used this camera four years ago-ish. And back then you could get these for under a hundred bucks, I think. Now they're closer to the $300 range. So they have gone up in price, which means you need to be even more cautious about buying one that isn't working. And then on top of that, you have to make sure you find a good entry point because at a certain point, it no longer becomes a budget friendly option when it gets to the price of the option it was budget friendly for. Needless to say, I do think this is still a nice budget friendly medium format option if you don't mind the size and bulk of it. Uh, it's a fun camera, great results, great lenses too that are also comparatively speaking pretty cheap. There's also a company called RX that will uh, upgrade these and basically deck them out, do a complete CLA and rehaul them, basically do a complete overhaul. That is going to cost you a pretty penny, but once that's done, I mean, this is going to last you quite a while and be about as good as any other medium format camera you can get as far as durability and quality. I mean, you're not gonna really have any issues once you've had that done for quite a while at least. And then last thing I will say, it's kind of a quirk about the body is you can't focus or compose your shots until you have advanced the film. So the mirror is in the up lock position until you cock the film and then you can look, compose your shots and take 
your shot. So this does allow you to check your exposure. Uh, it's just in a funky way. So what you have to do is press this lever over here, that drops your mirror, and then the lever on the other side will close the iris and stop down your aperture so you can check your exposure, which is funky. But then to actually go ahead and take your shot, you then have to fire the shutter, then you can cock your shutter, and then you can take the shot. So it is a bit of a process, but it does give you that option. Given the size of this, I thought I was gonna have a lot more difficult time and a lot less good experience carrying this around, but it does allow for you to easily kind of carry it by the lens. The way the mount sticks out from the body here, it kind of lends itself to being held like this. Uh, so that made it a little more bearable. It's kind of impossible to grip it from the side. There's no grip, there's no handle, nothing. Uh, it does have little notches for a strap, but it's like a proprietary strap. It's not just the hooks that you can latch onto it. So it does make it less uh, walk around friendly. So I have to say, even though I did kind of enjoy my experience shooting this, it's not gonna be something that I hang on to personally. Now that has nothing to do with the results that this produces. Results wise, it's fantastic. It's right up there with a lot of other medium format cameras. And like I said, the glass is budget friendly, but also you don't really sacrifice any quality as long as you don't get a bad copy. The main reason is just the form factor. It's just, it's a little bit too big for my taste. I tend to lean more towards the compact setup especially since I'm always shooting digital photography and videography as well. Uh, this just just a little bit uh, too much for me to kind of take out and about. And since I have the RB67, which is more of like a studio camera for me and more indoors and kind of things, this really doesn't have a place in my kind of setup. I wouldn't take it traveling, but then I also wouldn't take it for kind of in-house studios or anything like that. So it doesn't make sense to keep it for me. Also, it's not even mine, so there's that too. Nevertheless, a great camera. If you have any questions about this, feel free to ask in the comments below. Uh, I am selling this, not for me. This is Jude's camera that I'm selling. The RSAT lens and the body as well. I'm selling those separately. If you want them together, uh, you can ask me and maybe we can work something out. Again, this is a great camera. It just doesn't fit into my setup. So again, I've gone to commentpicker.com, typed in the wording required, as well as, you know, of course you had to enter in a film, typed that in, pulled up all the comments, and then clicked pick random comment, which it did. And so the winner is Melanie. Melanie, who says her favorite film is Kodak Gold 200. So congrats to you, Melanie. Uh, email me or message me on Instagram. I will be commenting on your comment and try and reach out to you uh, so we can work something out as far as shipping goes. I got a lot of cool films in the comments below, uh, so I'm gonna be looking into a lot of those and trying to do different reviews and all kinds of videos with those films uh, so you guys can see a bunch of the options that people left in the comments. If you're looking for new films, read the comments in the last video because a lot of people left a lot of great options in there. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be the winner for this one. Thank you everyone who commented and participated. Again, there will be plenty more in the future, so keep watching. So comment down below, let me know what you think of the Kiev 60, if it's something that would work in your setup, uh, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are on this very interesting uh, camera body. So I hope you found this uh, information useful on the Kiev 60. Again, if you have comments or questions, ask those below, and I will see you in the next video.